So I got a real random video for you guys tonight. I got a bunch of parts in, but I need to make another big order of parts so I can get everything here to finish this off. You always seem to forget those one or two parts. Uh, I got the radiator in, so we're gonna look at that, make sure I can order the correct size fans, because those always uh, adjust a little bit. Then you always have fuel system stuff that you always forget a few fittings, so I'm gonna look at all my whole fuel system and make sure I have what I need to complete it. And then just start making a checklist of all the little th random things that I'm gonna need to complete this project. And I'm sure there'll be more, but trying to keep parts coming so I don't run out of parts and I can keep making forward progress on it. So let's see what we got and let's find out what we need. Got a China radiator here. Hopefully it has no virus attached to it, but this is uh, like for an 84 Corvette. So these are supposed to work. So I'm actually going to get the radiator support on here, get this in it. And then I can measure for fans and see how much depth I have here so I can get some fans coming for this thing. So after looking at it, I thought originally when I ordered this that it was supposed to kind of sit to the inside. If you guys can see it doesn't. If it hits, I'll have to notch something for the cap right there. But even by setting it right there with some room here, um, I can actually run like a two and a quarter, two, probably two and a half thick fan if I had to. But looking at what's on the Mazda, these little guys were like two and a quarter deep and then looking at the camaro those are about the same really so uh two and a quarter right there so it looks like most fans are about two and a quarter thick so i should be able to run it on the truck no problem and just they'll be on the inside so i need to order uh pusher fans and it should be all right i think i could still get by with even putting them to the inside if i needed to uh, since they taper away from the pulley, but just to save a little bit of room I'll probably just sink them into the outside here and then the core on this is right about 23 and three quarter wide So I'll need to figure out some fans that are about half that so I don't think I can get by with two 12 inch fans I'll probably have to look at like two 11 inch fans Which will give me a little in between the two of them and then get a couple of those coming so I can put them in here and then also on the height yeah, so like two 11-inch fans would work out pretty well and then leave me a little bit of room to mount them up in the corners and everything else. So I ordered this through Motion pretty excited. So this is an Aeromotive standalone fuel cell. So I'm going to go ahead and get it open and show you guys. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. And there it is, the Aeromotive standalone fuel cell. So this has the pump in it with a baffle. I didn't want to go with a huge tank on this one because I didn't want a bunch of fuel sloshing around while doing burnout. So this is like a 6.2 gallon with the stealth in tank pump, return vent, and then the feed out of here. So this is going to be actually really cool. Uh, super easy to hook up. Power and ground. Power here, ground there. And then uh, run it to my relay. And real simple. Saves me a bunch of time with trying to route and plumb everything. And just going to go ahead and take this. So I'm just gonna take and mount it like right here in the back of the bed. So I'll need to come up with a couple little mounts, bend some aluminum pieces, weld them onto the tank here, and then it should be good to go. It'll make plumbing super easy uh, and saves a bunch of time. Nice little tank, sits right there in the back of the bed and doesn't take up a ton of room. And then I didn't wanna run it towards the back of the bed because if we do wall taps or hit anything back there, I didn't want it to mess up the tank. Also, the further out you get, the more radius you'd have for a splash and fuel. So this keeps it kind of centrally located in the truck and protected. So pretty neat setup here. Uh, pretty excited to use this. Also, if I end up ever putting like a supercharger or anything crazy on the truck to make a bunch more power, I can unbolt this, slide the 340 out, and slide even up to I think their 10 gallon a minute pump can even go in this thing. But I'm sure that'd be a little overkill for only a six gallon tank. But even like a three and a half, I mean, it could easily support uh 1800 horsepower or whatever on like a five gallon a minute pump so should be pretty cool and save a bunch of time super clean install i figured it'll be pretty easy to just you know come over and fill it up right here with a fuel jug nothing too crazy uh but i did not want 20 gallons of fuel sloshing around in the back while doing a burnout so another box showed up for motion with those couple bins i needed to finish off the headers a whole bunch of 8a in line and then a bunch of fittings, and I'm already realizing I'm gonna need a few more. So I put all the ones I need on the regulator, getting the one I need on the pump. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these 90s and put them on the pump for the feed, return, uh, and all of that. So then I can 
figure out exactly what other fittings I'm going to need to complete this fuel system. So then once I get the intake with fuel rails, I can kind of finish it out. I actually bought, got a few extra O-ring fittings for the fuel rails and I'm eating them up now because I forgot about this fitting here and that fitting there. So I will need to add two more to finish off the four I need for the fuel rails when they get here. And then uh, I got my straights. And then I believe in this box I have my uh, fuel filters too. So I'm trying to lay everything out in the truck right now just to make sure I am covered so I can plumb the whole truck when it comes time. It seems like you always forget like that one or two AN fittings. So I'm trying to lay it all out, make sure I got everything I need to fully plumb this truck. So then when I get the Terminator and the new intake and everything in, then I can plumb it all and finish this thing out and then hopefully fire it. These aluminum filters are really nice. They actually come apart at the end so you can take them apart, clean them, service them, and then put them back together. So I'm gonna run with one of these on this truck and then we should be good. It has a little pre-filter on the pump inside the tank and then this will go post uh, before the fuel rails. Start looking at this from the back. So right away I notice I'm gonna need another one for the vent. Uh, the return line should be able to flow okay up to the return up there. This will come out, I'm thinking maybe just a little line there over to the filter. This will shoot at an angle down. I'll put another little hole kind of like I did for the lines over there up here in the bed and then let them shoot down and along the frame rail. And then, so this is all good with that there, there, the return will go up. So bring those lines up along here. The feed will come up to this Y, into the Y, out of the Y, two 90s on each end of the fuel rail, two O-rings fittings for each side, each end of the fuel rail. That's where I'll need two more for this end of the fuel rail because I'm already noticing I'm missing those. And then I just noticed, hopefully I don't run into an issue here uh, because I'm gonna end up running the little mount for motion, mounts the regulator right here. The feed runs back underneath the intake, super clean setup. And then these will come off of the fuel rail and feed into here and this one into here. And then you have the return that shoots back under the truck and like I mentioned earlier, ends up being right here. So I need a fitting for this and two O-ring fittings for the fuel rails up there. And otherwise, I think I'm actually pretty good, but still I'm in a sense three fittings short from what I thought I needed because I forgot about this one and another one that I was looking at. So otherwise it's pretty good. That's something to note too, like on this uh, filter, if you get a filter that needs fittings, you're adding the cost of needing to put one of these, one of the ORB fittings on a filter. So when it already has that part of the filter, it makes it nice. But I was thinking this might work out. Come over the line. I'm gonna have to end up making a little mount or something. I don't know, maybe off the tank. Uh, I don't know if I want it really vibrating with the tank. So maybe out here, and then I can come up with some sort of little mount, or I could run it out, put this underneath the truck along the frame rail, and just run the line here over to it, come down into it here, uh, tighten this up against the frame rail, make a little mount or something like that, and then go from there. Definitely have a few options as far as that goes. I just can tell that I do need a few things, so I'll make sure I put those on the order, along with the uh, radiator fans for the radiator, and a fuel pump relay for the fuel pump, and then a few other things I'm sure uh, that I already have written down. But this has kind of got me a little worried, but I actually, if the Camaro wasn't so high, I could get up there and look at how far the fuel rails come out, because I would assume most are like that. Uh, but maybe it depends on how the intake is as well. But, I mean, you got the last port here, so you know you at least got an injector here. You got about this much fitting. So, I mean, it, it's, I don't, I don't know if I can run that here. We're going to... Uh, we're gonna have to find out. Like on the Camaro, I have the fuel line actually come up, come into this one, come over here, go into that, and then I have the regulator up here. But I wanted to do it where this is, I think, what they consider the best way of doing it is where you feed it into a Y, feed both fuel rails, and then have them go back into a regulator, then the return line goes back out and away. Super clean setup. Uh, so that is what I wanted to do on this truck is have some, some nice stuff, even though it's a whole bunch of not so nice stuff otherwise. But uh, we'll... We'll go from there, and I will get some more parts ordered. Pretty much opened up three boxes tonight, went through all the parts, and realized I need more, which is always part of it. But sometimes you need to get stuff here so you can lay it out, look at what you exactly need. I've written it down multiple times on a piece of paper, thinking I have all the fittings, and somehow still end up short. So 
Uh, that's just part of it. So I will get some more fuel part, fuel line parts coming. I also know from the other night of mounting the uh, transmission cooler here that I am short some line. So I'll get more line coming. I have enough fittings for it, but I do need more line. One of the things I forgot to order with the headers when I uh, ordered all of that stuff was I was a couple bins short, but I had no idea. I'd never built one, built them before. So I had to order like the straight like I needed as well as O2 bungs. So those are here. So now I have everything needed to finish up the headers. All right, so now that I know what I need, I'm actually gonna head inside, make a big list, and order a whole bunch of parts. Yay, no, it gets expensive here towards the end because it's all the little things that you kind of forget about and then you need to order to complete it. But once it's done and complete, it'd be well worth it. We can go send it for some burnouts and have a bunch of fun, make a lot of cool content for you guys. But that is it for this video. I appreciate everybody for watching. If you would like to see more of these videos, please hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.